In lesson two, we talked about the property of density. And we said that an object's density or a substance's density just describes that relationship between mass and volume. Density tells us how tightly together the molecules are packed in an object. And we looked at the example of aluminum foil when we took a dense piece of aluminum foil, we packed it into a tight ball, it would not float, it was not buoyant, but a loosely packed ball of aluminum foil was buoyant enough to float on water. And the interesting thing about density, you know, we say that solid objects have density, but liquids and gases also have density. And we're gonna look at the different densities of different liquids today by making what's called a density column. And essentially it just shows that same principle of buoyancy, the ability of one substance to float on another. And for this demonstration, I have four different liquids. I have salt water, and I've added some food coloring to these just so that we can tell the difference easily when we make our density column. I have regular fresh water out of the sink, which I've colored blue. I have some isopropyl rubbing alcohol that I've colored red. And I have some vegetable oil here, which the food coloring won't mix with it, but it's kind of its own yellowish color there. So we have our four different liquids. We're going to determine whether these four liquids have four different densities. And we can do that by making a layer of one liquid on top of another. And we're gonna begin by just adding about 50 milliliters of our salt water into our graduated cylinder here. So this is our layer of salt water. And of course, right now it's the only liquid in our graduated cylinder, but next we're going to add to that the fresh water. And what's interesting, you know, both of these contain water, but the green, the salt water, also contains that dissolved salt. So as I carefully add the fresh water on top of the salt water, let's see what happens. And I wanna make sure I pour this very, very slowly because obviously that salt from the bottom layer will mix in if I'm not careful. So now what we see, now that we've added that, you can see now we have a layer of blue on top of that layer of green. So the salt water and the fresh water are not mixing. The fresh water is staying on top. It's floating, it's buoyant on the salt water because it has a lower density than the salt water does. Next, we want to add our vegetable oil to our density column. So we're going to just take this and again, very carefully, very gently pour it on top of the fresh water. And you can see as I pour this, now we're getting that third layer, that vegetable oil, on top of the fresh water in our graduated cylinder. And we can just go ahead and pour some more of this in now, very carefully, very slowly. But you can see that the oil won't mix with the water. It's floating on top of the water because the oil is less dense. We still have our salt water on the bottom. We have our fresh water in the middle. And then we have our vegetable oil on the top. And the last liquid that we have to add here is our rubbing alcohol, our isopropyl alcohol. So we're going to pour that in. Again, we want to pour it fairly slowly. You can see if I pour it too fast, it kind of goes down into the vegetable oil. But then you also see that it does float back up to the top afterwards. So as we pour this, now we're getting that fourth layer of liquid in our density column. And this is really a very simple version of the density column. You know, you could take many different liquids. I've seen some people do density columns with 10, 15 different liquids. And if you know the densities of the different liquids, you can layer them in a way so that you have most dense on the bottom all the way up to least dense on the top. And these layers won't mix because we're dealing with substances of different densities. They are buoyant in relation to each other. The less dense substance will float on the more dense substance. So that's the idea of the density column. And the only key really with making a density column, some liquids have a tendency to mix together, like our fresh water and our salt water. Now, if I add the more dense on the bottom, it's gonna stay on the bottom for a while and the less dense is gonna stay on top. But we can see here, if we don't add the liquids in the right order, we can see what happens. If I add my fresh water first, 
Now we can see what happens here. I've added my less dense fresh water first, but if I add the more dense on top of that, the more dense salt water will not be buoyant. It'll want to sink to the bottom. Just like we talked about how a boat that filled up with water and was more dense would sink in the lake. It's the same concept here. So what's going to happen, you're going to see that these mix together because the problem with this is that as the salt water flows down to the bottom, now that salt from that water is kind of mixing in with the fresh water. So now instead of just having an area of less dense and an area of more dense, we just kind of have a weaker salt water all throughout because as that salt water sunk to the bottom, it kind of spread the salt around. So here we can see our finished density column. And again, this is just a very simple way to organize liquids in terms of most dense on the bottom to least dense on the top. And again, with this density column, we're going from salt water to fresh water to vegetable oil to rubbing alcohol. A very neat experiment, a very simple experiment that you can do at home to demonstrate the density of different liquids.